Good news, everyone. It's time for another TK panel quick tip. In today's tip, I'm going to show you how to use layer mask mode. It's activated by this checkbox in the rapid mask module, but I bet a lot of people either don't know what it is or forget that it's there. But watch this. So stick around and I'll show you some ways that I like to use it. So greetings from the safety of the outdoor exposure photography bunker. Now, if you're watching this from the future, I hope the coronavirus situation is better and life is getting back to normal. However, most of you will see this while we're still in the thick of it. So I hope you're well and safe and like me doing your part to keep yourself isolated and help flatten that curve. I'm trying to be productive and use the time to work on new videos that'll hopefully provide some education and maybe some entertainment to help you pass the time. So now let's get onto this TK quick tip on putting the layer mass mode to use. I cover layer mass mode as well as everything else in the TK panel in the TK video guide. So you can check that out if you want to get further into it. With the rapid mass module in normal mode, we normally generate and deploy mass like this. We start by selecting a source. In this case, I'll just select the composite channel source, and then we select a mask. And once we find the mask we want, we can modify the mask in this section, and then finally we output the mask. Normally we output the mask to one of these adjustment layers, or we output it as a selection for dodging or burning or mask painting or you could save it in the channels panel, or you can apply it to an already existing layer. This approach of creating the mask first and then applying it second works well for a lot of things, particularly when using it as a selection for dodging and burning and mask painting. But layer mask mode flips all this around. So instead of making the mask first, you make your adjustment first, and then you use the layer mask mode to apply and fine tune the mask while watching the image in real time. When we enter layer mask mode, you'll notice that all of the output options disappear. This is because everything you do in the rapid mask module from here on out will automatically and immediately be output to the selected layer as you do it. A simple example of this would be if you had already made, for example, let's just say a levels adjustment layer and you were using that to make an adjustment in the levels to the sky. But after you made the adjustment, you realized that you wanted to keep that adjustment just to the brightest parts of the photo. So you'd make sure that that was the layer that was selected. You'd enter layer mask mode, and then you'd start by selecting your source, and that initial mask will be applied directly to that layer. And if you want to try a different mask, you can just click a different mask button, and it'll automatically be applied as you click and you can watch the image change as you choose different masks. You can also modify the mask using the modify tools and again watch how the image changes as you modify the mask in real time. This enables you to get the mask fine-tuned to just the look you want and you don't have to worry about what the mask looks like. You get to make those choices based on what the image looks like. Another use for layer mask mode is if you already have a layer with a luminosity mask on it, like this hue and saturation adjustment layer I previously made, but now I realize that, that I've made the levels adjustment that it's oversaturating the blues in the sky even though I like what it's doing to the warm colors in the sky. So I want to now modify that mask that's already there, and I can use layer mask mode to do that. All I have to do is select that layer, make that the selected layer, and now anything I do to change or modify will be done directly to that mask. And one of the things I'm wondering is, is perhaps I should use a color-based mask so that the saturation adjustment just goes to the warm colors and not to the blue colors. So I'm gonna come up here to the color source and go to create and use this to create a mask that will better target the parts of the image that I want. So maybe something like that. So I'll apply that and that will be 
automatically output to the mask right here on the hue saturation layer. And now it's not saturating those blues nearly so much. It's allowing the warm colors to still get saturated. And it's a little bit oversaturated here in the water where I don't want those warm colors to saturated. So I can still select a black brush from the modify section. Maybe take the opacity of that brush down to about 30% and now brush that saturation adjustment out of the foreground and just now leave it up there in the sky where I like the effect. So as you can see, if you have an adjustment layer that doesn't have a luminosity mask, but you wanna put a luminosity mask on that adjustment, layer mask mode can be a great way to do that. And it's also really helpful for modifying luminosity masks that are already in your layer stack, but you wanna go back and make modifications to. Now, another use for layer mask mode is for split toning or white balance blending, as I sometimes call it. Let me show you that. When I took this photo, the clouds were casting a wonderful warm glow onto the snow, but it doesn't look in the raw file how I saw it with my eyes. Since I've opened this as a smart object from Lightroom, I can open it up in camera raw and get back to the raw adjustments. If I warm that image up, so that the highlights in the snow are the color that I experienced them, then the entire image is too warm. So I don't really want to do that either. So instead, here's what I can do. I can start by duplicating this smart object, and then I'm going to open up the one that's underneath and adjust those raw adjustments to really make it warm and maybe even a little bit more contrasty and maybe even bring up the, uh, the vibrance and the saturation of that one. Now, of course, it's way too warm everywhere, but I really just want that warm color in the highlights of the snow as I experienced it. Now I select the top layer and make sure I'm in layer mask mode in the rapid mask module. And then I can start looking for mass to be applied to this layer that will let the warm colors come through from the layer below in the parts of the image where I want them. So I'll start with a composite source and that's letting some of that warm color come through. But of course that's letting it come through. Well, let's see, it's coming through in the highlights, but it's fading into the shadows more than I want. So maybe a good way to go with this would be to try some of the zone masks and even maybe pick the, uh, the zone picker tool to click in here and get an initial zone mask that picked the five. Let's see if we go down to like a four and a half or a four. Uh, there we go. The three and a half or the three. Now that's getting a little too much there, but maybe the three and a half and then I can modify it. I can darken this area, bring up the lights, try to create some more contrast in that mask and to get the warms coming through where I want them while still protecting the blues in the shadow. So obviously I can work with that, but since I'm doing it in real time, I can watch how those changes are affecting how the image looks. And again, I don't have to necessarily look at how the mask looks. I can look at how the image looks to figure out what's the right combination there. And I may like the look down here in the bottom part of the image, but it's overdone up here. So I can still select a white brush from the modify section and maybe set the opacity of that to 50% and paint some of that effect out here in the upper part of the image where it's too strong and maybe even all of it. And I could just do all the adjustments to the upper part of the image on a completely separate layer with completely separate masks. So I think that shows how being able to see the image change as you modify the mask is really helpful in getting the mask just right. And layer mask mode can also be useful with the exposure blending technique that I show in more detail in this video. So in this photo, the dynamic range of light was too great for a single exposure. So I have two exposures that I bracketed. This one was exposed for the darker foreground and this one was exposed for the highlights and the foreground is underexposed. I've opened them up as smart objects so I can always get back to those raw 
uh, adjustments if I need to. But what I need to do first is get those stacked into a single image file. So I'll use the stack action in the combo module to get that done. And so now those two smart objects are stacked. I've got the dark one on top and the light one on the bottom, just the way I like them when I exposure blend. For the next step, I wanna make sure that this top dark layer is the one that's the selected layer, not the bottom. Make sure the top is selected, but I wanna turn off the visibility of it. And what that'll do is allow the rapid mass module to create a luminosity mass based on the brightness or luminance values of this lighter layer, but apply the mask to the top dark layer. So I need to make sure I'm in layer mask mode, and then I'll just select the composite source and allow that to add a lights one composite mask to that layer automatically. And then I can turn the visibility of that layer back on and we can see already what that mask is doing for the exposure blend. This initial blend is a good start, but I can see that I wanna modify that mask to really fine tune that blend. I really just want the mask to work through the transition zone right in this area. I want all of that darker exposure in the sky and really all of the lighter exposure in the foreground. One option that you have in layer mask mode that we haven't talked about or used yet is the two up mode. And this is optional, you don't have to use this. It works the same as I've previously uh, demonstrated without it, but sometimes I find that exposure blending is a good place to use the two up mode. So if I wanna use two up mode, all I do is check that checkbox, and it gives me two choices, vertical or horizontal. This is a horizontal image, so I think I will do a horizontal two up. And what that gives me is the mask view on the top and the image view on the bottom. I wanna be able to see the entire image, so I'm gonna zoom out until we fit the mask view in the space, and then this button will match the two so that they look the same on screen. Now, if I select different masks, I'll see the mask change and I'll see the image change side by side. And this can be helpful in selecting the right starting mask. And in this case, I think, boy, it's a tricky one, but maybe that three or the two, I think I'm gonna go with the two in this case, as a starting mask, but then I can do further modifications now. And if I, modify that mask to lighten the bright areas in the mask and darken the dark areas in the mask. We can see more of that image coming through and the blend happening a little better. And I can further make modifications to that with the brushes. For example, I can take a black brush, maybe 50% opacity, and on the mask view, paint in that foreground and then watch it update down here in the image. So I wanna really just paint out all of the dark exposure, most of the dark exposure out of the foreground. And then I can switch over to the white brush, again, maybe 50% and paint more white into the upper part of that mask. And really, again, I'm just trying to get the transition zone here across the middle of the image. So maybe somewhere like that. Now, if I click any of the layers, it kicks me out of two up mode, which is no big deal if you accidentally go to, for example, turn on and off the uh, visibility of an image layer, then you lose your two up mode, which is no big deal. Anytime you can close either one of these views, you don't lose anything, they're the same image. And then if you wanna get back into two up mode, you can just click the horizontal again, and then match them again, and you're right back. But if you're ready to be done with two up mode, you can just uncheck the, uh, the two up box and then close one of the images and you're good to keep going. What we've got now is a really good blending mask that we've created, but we didn't really have to watch the mask too closely because we actually watched the image and saw how the blending was looking. And now we've done a really good job of blending those two exposures together and containing that entire dynamic range. So if you're working with the mask on a layer that's already there, then layer mask mode can be a really great tool. All you need to do is select the layer that you wanna work with and then check layer mask mode and everything you do in the rapid mask module will happen automatically to the mask in real time and you can view what it's doing right on the image. So I hope this has been an enlightening look at the benefits of layer mask mode. Once you understand how it works, then I bet you'll begin to see even more ways to use it. 
So thanks for tuning in. Stay safe and be well, and I'll see you again soon.